One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, three. Good. Thank you. Good.
Good morning, church. Welcome to worship and welcome to Wald Lake United Methodist Church. I am Reverend Kenny Walkup, and I'll be leading you through worship as our folks sneak into the sanctuary this morning. <laughs> that just means the coffee was really good today, so thank you to our coffee makers and snack providers out there. If you're a first-time visitor, come on in, you know, leave your coffee behind, come on in. If you're a first-time visitor, thank you for joining us this morning in worship. We are glad that you are all here, whether you're here in person in our sanctuary or you're worshiping with us online this morning, thank you. Whether you're here or there or anywhere, we want you to you're a value part of the ministries here at Wald Lake United Methodist Church. The mission of the United Methodist Church is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And how we live out that, that big mission more locally here is by our vision statement, showing compassion in our community by sharing the light and love of Christ. Thank you. When you came in, you got one of our white announcement sheets. Please make sure and read through that so you know what's happening in the life of the church. Lots of things taking place this week. Also, you got one of our uh, yellow connection cards. Please make sure and uh, let us know you're here. Drop your name on the front of the card. We uh, track our attendance that way. And if anything has changed, uh, like an email or phone or make a note of that so we can keep our records up to date. And if you're worshiping with us online today, make a, a note, a comment, please, in the comment section. Let us know you're here. You can also jot your prayer requests down there also, and they'll get to me a little bit later in our worship service. A few announcements. Our blood drive is coming up this Thursday, so today is your last chance to sign up. So please uh, get with Linda Nielsen today in the parlor after church and sign up. The good news is we've hit our minimum already, uh, but the bad news is we still need more blood. So if you can uh, come by this Thursday and donate, we'd love to have you join us. Also, Sunday school begin. Wow, Sunday school begins September 10th. Just a Two weekends from now, two weekends from now, we have a class for the children and we have two classes for our adults. The descriptions for each class is listed in your white announcement sheet. Please read through that and, uh, and consider joining a class this year. Uh, get to know folks in our church a little better and take a chance to deepen your faith a little bit, your faith a little bit. We are also in need of a few people who can help uh, in our rotation to teach our children's Sunday school class. So please uh, pray on that and consider volunteering. You can sign up in the parlor on one of the sign-up sheets. One more announcement that's not, I don't think, in your white sheet. Uh, Rod asked me this morning to make an announcement that choir practice begins this coming Wednesday. And I'm sorry, I, w I, won't, be, I won't be in town to join you uh, uh, but I'll be thinking about you as you're here this Wednesday night uh, getting ready for our choir season. Michelle has our September mission of the month. Good morning. Human trafficking, sometimes called modern slavery, involves forcing someone into a situation of exploitation. This can include forced labor, marriage, prostitution, and organ removal. It's estimated that internationally there are between 20 and 40 million people in modern slavery today. Human trafficking earns global profits of roughly $150 billion a year for traffickers 99 billion of which comes from commercial sexual exploitation. Children and youth experiencing homelessness are a prime target of this lucrative and criminal industry. Human trafficking has become a major problem in Uganda because one in 10 children there are orphans. In some areas of the country, up to 10% of the children have been trafficked. The lack of opportunities and access to resources has left young Ugandans who live in rural and underserved areas vulnerable to exploitation. After serving on mission trips to Uganda, Detroit Tigers pitcher Matthew Boyd and his wife Ashley Boyd followed a calling 
that God placed on their heart, and they founded the nonprofit Kingdom Home. Matt and Ashley are some of the kindest people you will ever meet, and they have a heart for serving the Lord. Kingdom Home, our September mission of the month, has a mission to end child sex slavery in Uganda through prevention. They do this by providing a safe place to live for children at risk of entering the sex trade, most of whom in the program are orphans. Like many complicated issues of our day, we search for root causes and seek to work at that level instead of putting band-aids on things. What has been found in this situation is that prevention is over 98% effective at keeping children from ever entering the sex trade, 98%. Last year, we reported to you that construction was complete on Kingdom Homes three houses, and they had moved 101 girls and boys into these new forever homes. This year, they are moving into their next phase of their plan, which will be steps to ensure that these children not only have their basic needs met, but are receiving the resources to thrive as adults in society. They foresee all of the children living within Kingdom Home, excelling in their God-given callings and becoming difference makers in their community. This Thrive initiative includes three goals. First is providing resources for outdoor play, including a soccer field and a play structure. Second is providing educational tools and learning opportunities, including tutors, special courses, computers, and internet on the property. Hiring of, or number three, hiring of three additional staff members who are well qualified and provide guidance to the children. Last month, Wild Lake UMC provided support and attendance at the Kingdom Home Uncork for a Cause fundraising event in Birmingham. Here is a photo of our group with Matt and Ashley Boyd. I just got word that the proceeds and private donations to this event totaled $50,000. Thank you for your support of Kingdom Home. The Boyds have told us over and over again how much they appreciate our church and how grateful they are for our support. If you would like to donate to this mission, see the information in your announcements. And it's not September yet, but since I won't be here next Sunday, we wanted to give you this information ahead of time. So thanks to you and all of our Kingdom Home supporters, harm and fear of sex trafficking have been replaced with safety and love. These children who were once at risk are no longer alone, and that is something we're celebrating. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Let us pray. Most loving and gracious God, we just come to you today with uh, hearts full of love for you, for your son, Jesus Christ. Grateful that we can come together and gather in a space like this where we might lift our voices and sing and praise to you. Hear your word spoken and learn ways in which we can draw closer to you, ways in which we can continue to be transformed, molded, and shaped into that image that you have for each one of us, that image that mirrors your Son, Jesus Christ. Loving God, continue that transformation, we pray. May this service be a blessing unto you. May those who are joining us, whether here or virtually, or will be worshiping with us later this week, may they also receive a special blessing. It is in your Son, Jesus Christ's loving name, that we come and pray. Amen. For you this morning looks like this. How is your relationship with your brothers and sisters? How many, are there any uh, uh, only children? None. Awesome. So how is your relationship with your brothers and sisters? Now I invite you to make yourself available to the Holy Spirit. And let us begin our morning worship service.
Good morning, church. Please stand in body or in spirit for the call to worship. Family of God, as we gather today, Jesus asks us, who do you say that I am? You are our Messiah, the Son of God, living God. Family of God, as we gather today, the Holy Spirit asks us, who do you say that I am? Your comforter, advocate, and sustainer. Family of God, as we gather today, God the Father asks us, who do you say that I am? You are our creator, provider, and healer. Family of God, as we gather today, the triune God asks us, who do you say that I am? You are the love that creates, saves, and enfolds us into the family of God. May we be instruments of love in all that we are and all that we do. Amen. Let's all now greet others with the love of Christ. Please remain standing for our opening hymn. to invite our children up for our children's message. Come on up, guys. Hi, guys. How are you today? Good? How are you guys? Good. Good. Thank you. Thank you. I, I got a secret to tell you. 
You want to know the secret? I'm gay. Okay, he's two. Here's my secret. I am my mom's favorite son. I'm her favorite. I'm her only son, too, yeah. And, and my sister is her favorite daughter. It's her only daughter. But I don't think mom has a favorite child. Well, I do, but... <laughs> you know, we won't get into that right now. So, uh, I bet you're your mom and dad's favorite daughter. Yeah, probably. Probably. And I won't go there. Uh, so moms and dads probably shouldn't have favorite children, right? Like you shouldn't like have one favorite over the other, right? Probably not. It wouldn't be good. At least they shouldn't tell you that, right? They shouldn't tell you that you're my favorite. You're my, no, my favorite. They shouldn't say they're your favorite. But in today's story, in today's story in the Bible, there's a man named Jacob, and he has all these children. He has 13 children. That's a lot. Twelve of them are boys. Wow. Too many boys. Too many boys. Just way too many. But the problem is he actually tells them which one is his favorite. I know, not good. It's not good to play favorites, is it? No, we shouldn't have favorites. But in today's story, uh, well, you'll hear it as I tell the story a little bit later of how that all works out for him, but... The bottom line is we shouldn't have favorites, and we shouldn't tell them who our favorite is. How's that sound? Good? Let's pray. Dear God, God, we thank you you. for our parents parents. that raise us us and teach us us and and love us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You're all three my favorite. Today's scripture comes from Genesis chapter 37, 1 through 4, and 12 through 18. 
Jacob lived in the land of Canaan, a fine example of a... uh, No, sorry, we don't have the licensing for that, so I'll just read. (laughs) I think I'm way funnier than anybody else does. (laughs) So the actual scripture for today... Jacob lived in the land of Canaan, where his father was an immigrant. This is the account of Jacob's descendants. Joseph was 17 years old and tended the flock with his brothers, while he was helping the sons of Bila and Zilpah, his father's wives, Joseph told their father unflattering things about them. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he was born when Jacob was old. Jacob had made for him a long robe. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of his other brothers, they hated him and couldn't even talk nicely to him. Joseph's brothers went to tend their father's flocks near Shechem. Israel said to Joseph, aren't your brothers tending the sheep near Shechem? Come, I'll send you to them. And he said, I'm ready. Jacob said to him, go, Find out how your brothers and are and how the flock is, and report back to me. So Jacob sent him from the Hebron Valley. When he approached Shechem, a f- man found him wandering in the field and asked him, What are you looking for? Joseph said, I'm looking for my brothers. Tell me, where are they tending sheep? The man said, They left here. I heard them saying, Let's go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them in Dothan. They saw Joseph in the distance before he got close to them, and they plotted to kill him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Alex, for our reading this morning. Now, most of you have met uh, my mother, Sue. There she is. She has been here multiple times over the past uh, three or so years and even went with our church, uh, with Walled Lake UMC, up to God's country uh, last year in 2022. Uh, My nephew, TJ, you may have met him a few times, the big bushy curly hair, uh, has even joined her here on occasion a few weekends. But you have never met his mother, my sister. Now, my dad, uh, Kenny Sr., and my mom, Sue, had two children, Angela and me. I'm about three and a half years older than Angela is, and that, that doesn't sound like a lot, three and a half years, but the two of us could not be any more different. Now, different is, is not bad. Don't get me wrong. Different is not bad. We are just We have grown to be very different kinds of people, completely different personalities, as well as very different likes and dislikes. And the differences between between siblings are something I've always found to be very interesting. They, They kind of perplex me. I mean, the same two people raised us in the exact same home, So in my mind, somehow I think that that we should be more alike. But I guess the differences between her and I are not at all that uh, uncommon in families with children. In our reading today that Alex did for us, we meet a rather large family by today's standards, not by those, but today's. A family with, as I said, 13 children, one daughter and 12 brothers. Now, there is no way that of these 13 children, they could all be alike, could they? Not really. Now, this family, uh, you could call this family dysfunctional, at least when you hear the, the entirety of their story from the very beginning to the very end. The story we read to you today, Alex read it, you focuses on the 12 boys So we'll simply call them Jacob and Sons. This is week two of our Searching for the Faces of God series, and the title of today's message is, What Are You Seeking? Would you please uh, bow now and pray with me? 
Come, Holy Spirit, and fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Dear God, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts, may they find favor in your sight, for you and you alone are our rock and our Redeemer. In Jesus' loving name we pray. Amen. Now, a few weeks ago, I was on vacation in Houston, and uh, Alex uh, brought the message that morning. Wonderful job. And during that message, she introduced you all to, to Jacob. Remember him? He was the guy in cahoots with his mother, Rebecca. Cahoots is a good word. He was the same guy that stole his birthright from his brother Esau, tricked him. And then he fled, and as, as Alex told us, found himself sleeping on a rock where he had this dream, this vision, in which God spoke to him. Remember this guy, Jacob? Well, he's back. He's back today, but, but this time he's a, a little bit older. I, I can't say a little bit wiser, but now he is married with four wives, and as I said earlier, 13 children. These 12 boys... Uh, that as Alex uh, told us two weeks ago, they will become the 12 tribes of Israel. And with such an honor on this family that is to come, you might expect that, that all is well within this uh, brotherhood. But we could not be further from the truth to assume that. You see, there is this, there is this one brother. There's always that one brother, right? All of a sudden, Chuck's looking down. I don't understand why. <laughs> He's the one. There's always one brother, and in this story, his name is Joseph. And as Alex told us, he is 17 at the time of the story. And as she read to us, Jacob loved Joseph more than the rest of the boys. Now you can read the story in Genesis yourself to understand exactly why Jacob loved him more. But to show how much Jacob loved him, he made him this dazzling coat of many colors. It was red and yellow and green and brown and blue and blue. <laughs> Alex read to us the beginning of chapter 37, and then a part that's closer to the end of that chapter. No, I'm not coming to choir practice. <laughs> and all of God's people said, Amen. There. <laughs> you didn't have to agree so enthusiastically. <laughs> There's a key piece of the story uh, in between these two points where Alex read to us that you need to, uh, you need to know that piece to connect the two parts of the story uh, together. Now, our text that she read to us says that the brothers hated him. They hated Joseph. And to be fair to the brothers, he wasn't exactly a candidate for a brother of the year. And here's the key piece you need to know. Joseph would have these dreams, or, or visions more likely, in which he was better than his brothers. Now, if you had 12 brothers, and you had dreams or visions about being better than them, um, would you keep those dreams to yourself? Maybe, maybe. But Joseph... Joe did not do that. Matter of fact, he would go and tell his brothers about these dreams and visions he was having. Maybe he was bragging. I don't know. Tell them how his dreams revealed to him that, that he was or someday would turn out better than they are or would be. Here's your question for this morning. Do you think that him telling those things made them love him more or less? Yeah, less. 
So when Joseph goes to his brothers later in today's reading, do you think they were excited to see him? Show of hands. Not a single hand. That they, uh, when they saw him, they, they ran up to him giving him hugs and kisses. No. Everybody say no. No. Just the opposite, actually. Just the opposite. There's a television show that I enjoy watching on the Discovery Channel. It's called Expedition Unknown. Anybody know this? Oh, good, 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 good. So on the channel's uh, website, on Discovery Channel's website, uh, they describe the show like this. Expedition Unknown chronicles Josh Gates, that's the character, his global adventures as he investigates iconic unsolved events, lost cities, buried treasures, and other puzzling stories. Now, if you watch the show, has he ever discovered anything? No. Well, not really. But it is really good television. I think it is. And when I watch the TV show, it, all reminds, it always reminds me of the, uh, of the movie franchise National Treasure. The show, that movie's where the main character is uh, Benjamin Gates, no relation to Josh, played by Nicolas Cage. Now, in the movie franchise, Ben Gates goes in search of this country's lost or forgotten treasures. He actually finds them. But in both of these shows, there's one thing in common. One person, Josh Gates, Ben Gates, always goes in search of something. Usually it's some kind of treasure, something that's been lost. One person that is seeking something that has eluded everyone else. And there's a parallel to God in these two shows, as well as in our text from today. And now I'll try to put it all together for you. Now, I believe on some level, and at some time, we all find ourselves searching and seeking out God. And for most of us, that, that seeking begins at some point in our life, whether we are younger or older, it doesn't seem to matter, and that search will continue until the last time that we close our eyes and take our last breath. And on some level, I, I don't really believe that we ever find God. Or, or better said, we never stop searching to fully understand God and God's desires for our lives. But then again, maybe it's all about focus. If we focus on the search... We never complete the search. And therefore, we will remain vigilant in keeping our eyes on the one with whom we are seeking. And maybe in the end, that is what's more important anyways, to continue seeking for God. In our story today, Jacob has lost his focus. Instead of loving his children equally, he had a favorite. And he showed them which one he favored, and it made the others jealous. As it probably would to any one of us if our parents favored one over the other. It was his loss of focus that sent Joseph out to Shechem to look for his brothers and the flock. Joseph, or Jacob himself, was, he was blind to his other son's feeling of this outcast son named Joseph. Now, I alluded to this a little bit ago, but the question that we could ask ourselves was if Joseph told his brothers about his dreams to brag. You know, my corn is taller than your corn. My star is higher and brighter than your star. 
bragging would be a loss of focus for Joseph on why God has given him this, this great gift. Now, it is much later in our story that we find out that Joseph has been given this gift to interpret and understand dreams. Now, whether or not he had this gift while he was talking with his brothers, I don't claim to know. And whether or not he knew the dream's significance, that we will find out later in our story. But at this point in time, we find Joseph off far from home. He is off, as the text says, in the fields of Shechem, where he is seeking his brothers. But what I am convinced of is that he did not realize exactly how much animosity there was between him and them based solely on his actions. And lucky for him, or, or unluckily for him, as it will turn out, a man sees him wandering in the fields in Shechem and tells him that his brothers have headed for Dothan. Here's a map. You know I like maps. A map of what's happening. Hebron and the accompanying valley is in the, uh, the bottom middle of the screen. Kind of hard to see, but the bottom point is, is Hebron. Hebron. And Joseph is heading north from there through Jerusalem. And you can see the next city up into Shechem. And it's there he encounters this stranger. And there he goes further to the city of Dothan where his brothers are. It is in Dothan that everything changes for all 12 of them. Now the good news is we're going to get to all of that next week. So I invite you back next week to hear that part of the story. I believe that at different times in our lives, we find ourselves seeking different things. At various times in my life, I have been in search of friends, in search of new homes, different kinds of information. I have searched for answers to difficult questions. I have wondered about my life, where I am, where I'm going. And the search seems to change based on our life's circumstances. But what doesn't change is the constant in our life to continue to seek something out. In today's story, Jacob, I believe, sought out happiness. I believe he sought out fulfillment in his son, Joseph. We find Joseph seeking out his brothers, the ones he assumed loved and cared for him. And verse 28, we find that his brothers are seeking out a way to kill him. Now, none of the above are particularly what I would call seeking out God's will. At least not yet. Now, there was a, uh, in, the, in the lectionary readings for any given Sunday, there's four readings. There's an Old Testament, there's a, a psalm, there's a gospel reading, and a New Testament writing. Today, the, the gospel reading comes from Matthew. It accompanies today's Genesis text. And in that story, the disciples find themselves in a boat during a raging storm. And this, this story in Matthew takes place immediately after the feeding of the 5,000 we covered last week. It is a story about God's will and our focus. So as this storm is raging, the disciples in the boat being tossed from side to side, Jesus approaches them walking on the water. It is Peter that, that sees Jesus first, calls out to him, asking Jesus to call Peter to him on top of the water. 
And Jesus does exactly what Peter asks him to. And Peter steps out of the boat onto the water and begins walking toward Jesus. Now, there's so many analogies to make in this story. Peter and the boat, the raging water, and Jesus. Things like, have we asked Jesus to call us out of our comfy boats, the ones we find ourselves sitting in, has Jesus called us out of that boat, yet we find ourselves too paralyzed with fear or something else to take any kind of action? Or have we stepped out of the boat like Peter, but then have we lost our focus and now we find ourselves sinking in the water? In our story about Peter, As long as Peter is seeking the face of God, as long as he is focused on Jesus, he remains on top of the water. But as soon as he stops seeking Jesus, the moment that he loses focus even for a second, he begins to sink. Jacob, Joseph, the brothers, Peter, all have one thing in common. They have all lost their focus on God. They have all stopped seeking God. They have all stopped seeking God's will in their life. We would do well to learn from their mistakes. And to do so, we should formulate a plan. We should ask some questions. And the first question we should ask ourselves is, what does seeking God look like? And how will we find the clues? I want to give you three areas to focus on. Three areas that I believe are key for each one of us, no matter where you are in life. Three keys to seeking God and focusing on Jesus. Number one, in Matthew's gospel, Jesus tells the disciples to focus on the word of God alone. Perhaps we should also start there. Perhaps we should start the same place Jesus tells them to start. Our beginning should be time spent in God's Word, time spent reading the Bible, time spent with God. And if you find yourself confused in your readings or in how you do this piece, there are many, many good references that I would love to sit and speak with you about direct you to. Second, our time should be spent talking to God through our time of prayer. But just as important as our time speaking is, is our time listening for God to speak to us through quietly meditating. Speaking through prayer, listening through meditation. This is part of a little a give and take, if you will. Speaking, listening, It's something I need to work on. I am not the best listener in the world at times. I get distracted easily, look a squirrel. (laughs) It's something I understand, something I realize, something I am personally working on, listening better. Third, is to participate in a community of faith, one that will nurture you and hold you accountable. Remember that seeking God is a lifelong journey. It's not a sprint to be completed as fast as possible. So in this community of faith, like the one you find yourself in right here, you will find support. But not only support, you'll find correction when needed. We're not always on the right path. A good community of support will tell us that. I have various groups that I meet with, various friends that I talk to on a regular basis that I use as my own accountability partners that check me at times, and they do their best at a very difficult task of keeping me on the right track. 
there is an assurance that Jesus gives us that's captured in Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 and 8. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, the door will be opened. These words captured in Matthew's gospel are the words of Jesus to his disciples. Words to them, but an assurance for us that when we seek with our heart, we will find what it is that we are searching for. The question I posed earlier was something like this. What does seeking God look like? Now, the better question might be, or actually the first question to wrestle with is, are you ready? Are you ready to make a commitment to yourself and to God to seek God and to begin a journey that will become part of the rest of your life? A journey seeking God that will last a lifetime but a commitment and journey with no greater reward. Let us pray. Most loving and grace-filled God, we are just in awe of the many ways in which you speak to us. Through the stories in the Bible, Jacob and Joseph and his sons, Peter, walking on water, until he loses his focus. Loving God, may we we be inspired by these stories to make a commitment to a lifetime journey of seeking you, a lifetime commitment of speaking with you, listening for you. Loving God, draw us nearer and closer, I pray, this day and every day. It is in your Son's holy name that we come to you. Amen. I'd like to invite our ushers to come in now and and, uh, receive this morning's offering. There were uh, uh, quite a few prayer requests that came in uh, this week, uh, both from our online worshipers uh, and from you who are gathered here this morning. I'm going to list those off for you. Michelle will then, uh, of course, put these in our uh, email coming out uh, on Monday. So there's quite a few. I'm going to go through them now. I ask you to, I ask you to bow now to, to be in a, a moment of prayer and reflection as I go through them. Ann Herman requests prayers for her back and for her knees. Lorna Wilgenen reached out to us this morning, receiving her second chemo treatment tomorrow. Prayers for her. Bailey Frazier and Bev Buell, both not feeling well. Cheryl Johnson requests prayers for their nephew, Nick Russell, who lost their house in Thursday's storm. Nicole Boucher requests prayers for her daughter, Siana, for healing to come home soon. Larry Beal requests prayers for Jean Bueller's mother who is dealing with medical issues. Prayers of celebration for Colleen and Larry Beal's 56th wedding anniversary. Prayers for Sandy and her folks as they prepare for her 
mom's upcoming surgery. Michelle requests prayers for her aunt, for her aunt Jeannie Wedergren, who fell and broke her hip yesterday. Bonita Scruggs requests prayers for the family of Mike Mink, her cousin who passed away after a work accident, tragically. Prayers for family and friends of the young man who drowned in Walled Lake this past week. Or uh, the Swarthout's friend Bill Reed, dealing with medical issues. Tammy Zavitz asks prayers for both her parents uh, having health issues. Larry Gaughan requests prayers for Nancy Winker, who had serious reaction to her cancer treatment. Bill and Robin Schweiger, prayer of praise on their 72nd anniversary uh, this week. Multiple prayers for families uh, going back to school, for children going back to school. Prayers for all of those dealing with effects of the storm this past week. A number of Michelle and I's friends uh, in South Lyon dealing with loss of power and damage to their homes. Received a text this morning from our superintendent, Reverend Toddy, that South Rockwood United Methodist Church was hit by a tornado on Thursday, uh, and significant damage was done to uh, to uh, the premises and the and the structure. So prayers for them. Loving God, there are so many things happening all around us this day. Many things out of our control. Many things that we simply come to you in prayer over. Prayers of hope, prayers of healing. Loving God, be with us this day as we as we depart. As we go forward, may we, may we think of ways in which we can be your hands and feet, ways we can help and provide aid. Loving God, we pray for our missionary, Helen Roberts Evans, as we continually pray for those in mission work around the world, those who, who reach deep into places where the gospel has not been so that people may learn of your son, Jesus Christ, and his love for them. Loving God, be with our missionaries, I pray. Be with the Josiah F. Yancey Church in Liberia, our sister church. Their pastor, Reverend Solomon, their DS, Reverend Hezekiah. We pray this day for our country and we pray for our church. Loving God, we pray for those who are in positions of leadership We pray that they leave from a place that brings glory and honor to you. Loving God, we pray all of these things the way that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Would you please stand now for our closing song?
Reminder, today is the last day to sign up for our blood drive on Thursday, and Linda will meet you out in the lobby to get you all signed up. So please uh, consider that as you depart today. May you go in the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and may you be filled this week by the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Amen.